In the last video, we took a look at the DJI Neo, which is DJI's entry-level both autonomous selfie as well as FPV drone, and it was excellent, but we did run into some issues with flyaways. In this video, I'm going to address the issues that I had with this drone, and we're also going to talk about things that you can do to protect your drone from flying away. I've been taking every single chance that I've gotten to go out and get some more experience flying this drone around, and since the first video, I've not experienced a single flyaway issue. And thanks to some of the comments from you guys in the last video, I know why. So, in the last video, I crashed this drone a lot. Oh. Oh. And I never went and turned it back off after I crashed it. When you crash, it can upset the IMU, which can lead to the drone flying away if you try to restart it without resetting the drone. Well, what is an IMU? Well, it stands for the Internal Measurement Unit, and its job is to read the gyroscopes and accelerometers, and these help to provide acceleration and orientation data, which is used to calculate where the drone is and at what speed it is flying. As you can imagine, if your drone doesn't know where it is or how fast it's going, it's obviously not going to respond to commands properly. So, to avoid this issue, you need to fully turn off and turn back on your Neo every single time you crash. This drone will allow you to take off without doing that, but you risk it having a flyaway issue every time you do this because the IMU has not been properly reset. And since I've started resetting it after every crash, I haven't had any more issues. There are a couple more things that I like and dislike about the Neo that I want to talk to you about. The first thing I want to talk about is the easy acrobatic mode that the DJI Neo has. <laughs> it's a whole lot of fun, but I really wish you could activate it while you're in sport mode. To activate the tricks, you just touch the control stick in whatever direction you want to flip, and it feels just like you're flying a banshee in the game Halo. And as you can see here, I crashed once again, so I'm gonna walk over and go reset the drone. That way, the IMU doesn't freak out and it doesn't fly away. The next thing I want to cover with the Neo is how easy it is to fly. I feel like you could hand this to anybody, and with hours, they can go from being completely inexperienced to feeling like an absolute pro. The motion controller is super intuitive. You basically just point where you want to go, and then it's super easy to modulate the speed. All you need to do is lightly apply pressure to the trigger. If you ever feel unconfident in your movements, you can just release the trigger, and the drone will stop abruptly. This allows you to maneuver tight spaces safely. And this is what I think the Neo really does quite well. It's such a small drone and it's so light and well protected that you can just come in such close proximity with objects and not really worry about bumping into them. One thing that I find really annoying about the Neo is the stock settings limit how fast you can climb both vertically and descent to one meter per second. You can change this in the settings for sport mode, but what this does in the real world is it makes it more difficult to get the drone to drop altitude to clear obstacles. I'll be showing you how to change this for yourself in a moment, but for now, I want to highlight how nimble this drone truly is. Within a few flights, I'm already starting to master the responsive controls of this drone. Since I've crashed this drone close to a dozen times now, I no longer fear the consequences of flying in close proximity to objects. Even if it collides, I'm quite confident that this drone, with its lightweight and durable construction, that it won't suffer any damage. That beep you just heard was me switching it out of normal mode, which allows you to use the easy acrobatics, over to the sport mode. In my last video, I incorrectly stated that in sport mode, this drone can fly at 16 meters a second. It actually is limited to 8 meters a second, and I go into my settings to try and see if I can turn that up. And as you can see here, I in fact cannot. But what I can change is these other parameters up to the highest settings that they will go, 
and this will allow the drone to be a bit more nimble in sport mode. In the default settings, it only really increases the speed forwards for you, but changing these will allow you to get more vertical height, backward speed, and lateral speed, which is like your horizontal axis. I really wish this settings page allowed you to change these speeds more so. This drone is definitely capable of going faster than 8 meters a second, but it's artificially locked if you're using this headset, the N3, and the Motion 3 controller. That being said, I still think this drone is super fun to fly. It's plenty fast when you're dodging around obstacles and have close proximity to things, but it feels incredibly slow as soon as you get it in a wide open space. Well, I don't know if I can say incredibly slow, but it definitely doesn't have the same kind of excitement factor that a faster FPV drone like the Avada 2 would have. I still think the performance that this drone has is acceptable, especially for the fact that it's sub 150 grams, 135 to be precise. And it does have quite a long battery life in the air, 17 minutes. And here, I decided to take the DJI Neo up this slide, and I ran into the same issue that I had before. It's that one meter a second climb rate. I adjusted it back into normal mode because I didn't want to move too fast, but while I was in normal mode, I still had the easy acrobatics selected, so the control sticks were only for tricks, which if I had switched it back, I would have been able to push up on the control stick to make it elevate, but since I could not, I crashed into the slide. I'm going to take this moment to ask you to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new here, and leave a comment down below what you think of the DJI Neo. The last thing I really wanted to show you guys today is the capability of the Neo fighting against wind. I flew up high, and as you can see, the drone is sitting basically at a 45 to be able to fight the high winds that I have here, and it still allowed me to get a pretty good cinematic view of the frozen lake below. Once again, I think the camera quality is quite good on this $200 drone, and I think it flies quite well in basically every environment. I'm very impressed with the drone, and now that I've gotten it to stop flying away on me, I really don't see any huge issues with this. I just really wish they would tweak the software just a little bit for this drone. I really wish they would allow you to increase the values for both the vertical climb as well as the top speed while you're in sport mode. I think the drone is capable of a lot more than what they allow you to do. But despite these challenges, I still really love the Neo, and I've been going out every chance I have to go fly it. But that's really all I have for you guys today. This is going to be a short one, so thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks. Bye now.